What's up, freaks and geeks? It's your boy, Kyle Christensen, and we are back with another Vendor Spotlight for MSP GeekCon 2023. This is where we get to meet some of the most interesting vendors in the MSP Geek community that have humbly sponsored MSP GeekCon 2023, and let's find out what makes them tick. We're going to explore their history, how they got involved in the channel, and most importantly, we're going to learn from their expertise and figure out how we can all level up as a community. And, you know... We're going to have some killer Q&A and interactions and really figure out how we can help you evolve as a technical professional. If you don't know what MSP GeekCon is, you're probably missing out. You've probably have been living under a rock, a pineapple, or, you know, your weird uncle's wartime bunker. This is the conference for technical professionals by technical for professionals in the IT services and MSP space. It's gathering of the most brilliant minds in the game, and we're all here to learn from each other and get better at what we do. Now, I'm Kyle Christensen. I'm here to ask the tough questions, but today I'm not the one in the hot seat. No, that honor goes to our guests, and I can't wait to see what they got in store for us. So let's get right to it. I'd like to introduce Tim. Tim is the special guest for us this week, the CEO of Compliance Risk. Tim is a seasoned professional in the governance risk and compliance space with over 20 years of experience helping organizations tackle their business problems with the help of people, process, policy, and technology. He is an expert in compliance risk management, governance, policy management, and cybersecurity, providing training, consulting, and technical assistance to managed service professionals. Tim is a busy guy, but most importantly, as a U.S. Army veteran, thank you for our service, Tim knows that what it takes to lead high-performing teams, and he brings that same level of discipline and expertise to his work at Compliance Risk. Tim is also a gifted communicator and educator with some of the peer grouping that he's done for people in our channel. And many of those members are MSP Geek members. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Tim Golden, a true leader in the governance risk and community space. Tim, welcome on. Wow, thank you, Kyle, for that introduction. <laughs> you know, it's it's humbling that when you actually hear those words put out there. Um, but thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, MSP Geek and the community around that, uh, you know, is, is really kind of near and dear to my heart. As somebody that thrives on community and thrives on being able to give back to that community, realizing just how much MSPs struggled with compliance, right? Being stuck in that world and dealing with that as an MSP for 17 years. We have a so Kyle, thank you so much here. Hey, I, you know, I do really appreciate it. And, you know, I kind of want to ask the stupid question because I think the word has more meaning than sometimes you hear. Mm. What is compliance when it comes to our space? I'm going to ask the dumb question. Sure. You know, the only dumb question is the one not asked or the ones that Kyle asks, right? <laughs> so, com <laughs> so compliance in its base shell of, of definition is really just adhering to a set of rules or a set of guidelines or a set of regulations that pertain to your business or your client's business, right? We can pick the easy one, right? Uh, something like California privacy protection. And when people think compliance, like- That's what a simple one. <laughs> Well, <laughs> exactly. It's not really a simple one, but the concept is simple, right? We need to protect people's data and frameworks like California Privacy or HIPAA or CMMC or all these mouthfuls of acronyms that go out in the space. Here's a set of standards that we need to help our clients sort of maintain and achieve and have continuous uh, monitoring around that, right? And so... Compliance in a nutshell, hey, here's a set of guardrails that you and your clients or your clients need to follow in order to maintain your legal and regulatory requirements. That's it in a nutshell. Okay, so it's it's rules, but not rules? Oh, it's rules. So like there are very specific rules for very specific industries We'll pick on CMMC, the Cybersecurity Maturity Model, which pertains to defense contractors. There's been a big buzz around that for the last two or three years. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a set of standards. Do you do this? Do you have that? Do you employ this? There's a set of rules and regulations and guidelines that are written into or will continue to be written into 
your contracts with the government, your client's contracts. And it says you need to do these things or else you won't get the contracts in a, in a basic sense. So yes, yeah. there are rules. No, yeah, and and you know, I can see why you've had to have been an educator for so long because even myself, right? I've been in the game for 20 plus years, having ran my own MSP, ran consulting companies and MSPs, coached MSPs that it sounds like there's a level of complexity to where mentorship almost has to be at the forefront of what you guys do. So, I'm almost making an assumption here and I would love for you to elaborate. Is that what compliance risk is looking to help MSPs solve? Yeah, so that's really where we started, right? You know, for those that don't know me, I've been in the space for 20 years, not as the MSP as we would all define it. In fact, kind of really wanted nothing to do with that because we had a nice set of clients and we had a nice set of stuff and we were doing managed services. But we decided to break out into the community and realize that there's such a massive community here that we love and now are part of and realizing that you're all struggling to understand what could be a complex thing as compliance. Listen, we've sledged through it. We know where some of the pitfalls are. And so we got on answering questions, guiding MSPs, helping individuals help their clients. And what we realized was that building a compliance focused peer group was a real benefit to the MSPs that came in join our weekly peer group, right? So we started with, hey, you know what? We see the need, right? Being part of that community and being able to give back, let's make this sort of organized structure and build a compliance focused peer group. So that's where we started. The people part where we like to say, we teach you to fish, right? On that whole peer group kind of thing. You know what a peer group is. Yeah. And you know, as much as I, I mean, obviously I've been in MSP geek back in the LT geek days. This is 2013 ish, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the whole aspect of it, right, was that community aspect. But at times, right, the conversation is very fractured, right? Slack and yeah. forums definitely leave some accountable aspects of digesting content out. So mm -hmm. I can see where something as detailed as compliance could really need that peer group structure to say, hey, guys, we're going to learn one thing today. Sit exactly. down and Tim's going to talk to you. Yeah, a good a good example is that of that is data flow diagrams. Wow, that sounds like a big word, right? So we know as IT service professionals and MSPs, we need to know what data we're protecting. We need to know where it's coming from. So I literally did, you know, one of our peer groups. We actually did it four times, so it's sunk in their head. What is a data flow diagram? How do we build a data flow diagram? What goes into? And we literally did hands-on lab. You know, we did it once last summer. We did it again in the fall. We kind of iterated and did it again this summer so that you can get sunk in your daily or monthly or annual routine. Like, how do I do a data flow diagram? Oh, and now I have the training to actually go do it and how it can benefit me as an MSP and ultimately my clients leading to hopefully more MRR, more project work, right? So just that one little thing, data flow diagrams. But we do this week after week after week, and we back it up with Slack, we back it up with educational materials that we put out on our dashboard and so on and so forth. I got you, man. And you know, I love the approach because for a lot of us that aren't maybe owners, right? A lot of us that might be watching the call where we're just the technical professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the value that our MSPs can bring us is education, right? Because that's that rising tide mentality to where now my education has more value that mm -hmm. I will eventually turn into salary and career growth and, exactly. you know, all of the extra stuff that's in there. And, you know, I, I also start to wonder too, Tim, is that all that education though, sometimes, and not about you, as I've gotten older, I forget it the next week. So, you know, are you guys trying to tackle the other side, which I guess, you know, for all, you know, education needs some type of its own compliance and maturity so an MSP can avoid its own risk in managing clients? Yeah, yeah. So, and I want to touch on one pre brief point before I, before again, because you mentioned that the technical humans at the MSP, the, the, the humans pushing the ones and zeros, right? We've now had, uh, let's see, 
three humans of our peer group now pass their CISPI exam, not because of compliance risk, but compliance risk helped augment their CISSP learning, right? Which then makes that human, you know, better prepared, more marketable, all that fun stuff, right? So, so I wanted to address that real quick. Uh, in, real in quick, can you explain what that certification is? Because I'm, yeah, I'm unfamiliar so, with it. So CISSP is, uh, in, in basic terms, it's like the PhD of cybersecurity, right? Okay. So organization, you, you may have heard of like Network Plus or Security Plus. CISSP, the stuff. Yeah, CISSP is like the big Mac daddy PhD level one, very hard to get. And not that we solely were the source for them passing, but they were asking questions that have ultimately led to them uh, learning, growing, and eventually passing their CISSP. And by attending the peer group, you can actually earn your CISSP ongoing credits. But that's enough about the peer group. So back to what you were saying, Kyle, um, you know, where does an MSP go from here? Is that what I think I heard you say? Yeah, you know, because to me, and as having ran an MSP and mentored many technical professionals, right, we have all this education sometimes. But is this just to supplement our clients from a, hey, part of their help desk and MSP offering? Or is this something bigger where you are helping MSPs in another avenue to support their clients? Yeah. So, you know, in, in the lack of, of a, a completely regulated industry at the moment, we know that that's coming, right? So, so at Compliance Risk, we help you, your MSP, get compliance ready, right? So that when things start to roll out, when things like, uh, oh, you, you mentioned CompTIA, right? CompTIA is doing this amazing uh, Trustmark program to, I hate to say, certify your MSP, but certify your MSP from an organization as, as well known as CompTIA. What compliance risk can help you do is get you through that journey to become compliance ready right by putting in the right people the right processes the right policies and the right governance to get your own house in order or as some of us like to say drink your own champagne or all those other analogies getting your own house in order compliance risk can help you through that that journey to get you compliance ready so that's great and that's a little jargony for me tim like break this down for me i'm an msp owner what is compliance yeah. risk going to give me to help with that? People, peer group, compliance as a service. Okay. So is that like a tool? Is it is it like some check marks? Is it is it a certification? So compliance, compliance as a service, Matt, like we had a really good conversation, is not well defined in the space. For us, it's partnering with you, the MSP, and partnering with your client, maybe it's a defense contractor and aligning those pieces together so that not only you get to learn in the process, but your client is well prepared for their audits down the road, right? So to specifically and point blank answer your question, we're gonna help you, we're gonna teach you, we're gonna grow you, and we're gonna help you put the things in place so that your MSP is now more operationally efficient more knowledgeable in these spaces and be able to perform this work at a repeatable process that is then monetizable. So coaching and consulting? Sure. Compliance as a, as, as a service is an arm of consult of, of coaching and consulting. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I was getting confused, right? Cause you know, if there's a SAS platform or is there something that my team can go in, you know, sure. that's where so I started to, Absolutely. Sorry? That's the third leg of what we do here at Compliance Risk. We talked about the people, the peer group. We teach you to fish. We talked about the compliance service where we fish with you. And now the policy and the governance, we have a tackle box. In other words, we have a SaaS application called Polygon that helps your MSP uh, streamline your compliance operations by managing policies and procedures and staying up to date with the latest regulatory requirements, right? Our SaaS platform makes this GRC governance 
more understandable and more accessible for your MSP. I mean, let's face it, as an MSP service manager or an IT level one, two, three, you're probably pretty frustrated with constantly being on the defense, constantly chasing after the bad actors on the right side of boom, right? Constantly playing the defenseman. With Polygon, now you can start to shift left. Now you can start to shift to that left side of boom, becoming prepared, taking a proactive approach to not only your cyber governance program internally, but also your clients and be prepared and be putting in guardrails before the boom happens, right? Our SaaS platform can help you through that. Okay, so layman's terms because, right, I'm, I'm the business strategy guy. It, sure. It's a, if I think back to my MSP days, right, I'm, a lot of our clients had HIPAA policies, right? Sure. They had their, their, their uh, the BAAs, right? Yeah. And it was sometimes a pain to not only get them signed, but also to know where they were. And from a technical perspective, I had engineers that were like, hey, here's a new client. And they would just start working on it because we didn't have the process to get that BAA signed because the sales guy was so excited to just get the new logo in the door that, you right. know, somehow it got missed. So mm -hmm. essentially, is Polygon like a documentation repository that is both governed and not governed to where I can manage those types of documents? Absolutely. And so we recognize that there are documentation platforms in the MSP ecosystem, but we also took that a step further and recognized that some of them lack some very important and key components. You mentioned, Kyle, um, approvals. You mentioned uh, signatures. You mentioned things like, and, and let's just take the word cyber right out of the conversation. Let's break it right down to employee handbook for that matter. When an employee comes on, HR is going to want them to sign that employee handbook and acknowledge that they received that handbook. Polygon tracks all of that in a full SaaS based application. Never again do you have to hunt for a Word document. Never again do you have to hunt and peck through SharePoint or worry about SharePoint permissions. All of this in a safe, secure SaaS application for your MSP all the way down to your clients. All right. I like that, right? Because I know for me, I mean, I'm not happy of admitting this, but a lot of them would end up in DocuSign. And from there, yeah. it would probably be uploaded to a SharePoint page. And and it was never managed. I'm, I'm going to be real, right? In the early days, especially for you MSP owners that are watching, where you're in that hustling phase where you're like, I'm just trying to stay alive. Mm. You, you do what's easiest. It's always the path of least resistance. And I know I was talking to Wes Spencer um, and Alex Farling a couple days ago. We're going to be doing a session called the Minor Leagues of Cybersecurity next week. And it was really focused on, you know, how do you do these little things that protect your MSP and your clients, even when you don't have the time or budget to protect a client like a giant MSP would. So these right. little things are so helpful because it removes the extra uh, clicks at the end of the day that you have to manage now, even in your early days. And, uh, you know, I want to change gears a little bit, Tim, because you mentioned something. It's even a new term for me, because and we talked about this at when I met you at Right of Boom, is the of boom was a very new phrase to me. I, I was mm -hmm. never something that I had really had in my vernacular. And yep. you mentioned shift left and you prepared this amazing content for our viewers that I kind of, I would like to talk about because it's really focused on what this new, and I guess environment or perspective on our clients and their attack space um, yeah. is meant for us as MSPs to manage. Yeah, so, you know, cybersecurity governance, right? Like, what does this mean? They're big words, you know, governance seems scary. And, you know, when we break it down to its lowest common denominator for you, the technical expert, like the process of governing having something in place and a process to back that up that is now repeatable, right? That is obtainable, right? And when we think of cybersecurity governance, we think of 
the policies, the procedures, the password policy, for example, the, the acceptable use policy, for example, right? And the ongoing management of those things, right? Not just do it once and forget it. We mentioned earlier compliance is here. We mentioned earlier that regulatory bodies are starting to form to making sure we're keeping our own house in order as well as our clients and our clients FTC safeguards, by the way, which whole nother thing um, is out like literally in less than 30 days. And these things require these documents to not only be existing, but also to be governed, to have change management, to have authorizing officials all the way down to training the end user and getting them to adopt these policies. That is left side of boom. Kyle, to answer your question, boom is the thing that happens, the ransomware, the, 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 you know, the encrypted event, the whatever. Boom is what happens. Right of boom is what do we do now? How do we fix it? How do we thwart it off? left of boom and shifting that left is being proactive in your MSP. I'm so glad you finally said the word because I'm like over here holding it back, just being like, let's simplify this. Yeah. Left is proactive, right is reactive. Mm -hmm. let's, let's not get into the marketing jargon. At the end of the day, us as IT professionals have to keep in mind, how do we become proactive, which means we have less shit to do if shit goes wrong, right? Let's, let's call it what it yeah. is. And then if we're on the right side, right? If we, whoa, just throwing my mic around all over here. See, right, we get boom. To the, <laughs> oh, there's my boom. Hey, right, we get to the right side. That's when Kyle and his team end up working overtime because we didn't put the necessary cautions in place. But there's also those attack surfaces, right? Which aren't always in our control, right? There's always those zero day effort, efforts or zero day risks. I don't even know if I have the right word. But those are those things that just kind of happen. And especially for us young MSPs, there might be stuff that, right, our of boom might be less mature than another MSP just because we're just getting started. Our standards are just getting going. So, right, whatever we can do to build this is what I'm kind of gathering from you. The more we can get disciplined on left of boom, the more, honestly, let's put it in layman's terms, the less effort we need to put in if the client ever does have a breach. Exactly. The better you, I, I will go back to my Boy Scout days, be prepared, right? So, you know, political not, stuff aside, like the Boy, the Boy Scouts got it right when they said be prepared, right? So why is governance important, right? Well, obviously, we talked about compliance, that big, scary word, right? Why is it important? Because there's laws, there's regulations, there's standards that we and our clients need to adhere to. And ensuring that we're doing this work will ensure we're being compliant with the laws and regulations. But let's even break that down to another step, like data protection, right? What are we protecting and make, how are we protecting it? Discussing in policies and procedures around all that kind of stuff. Like at the end of the day, I don't want to see my data showing up all over the internet and nor does your client, right? You know, just the other day, uh, let's see, a week, uh, less than a week ago, Harvard Pilgrim had a giant ransomware and you're hearing on the dark web, data is getting, you know, pushed all over the place and sold, right? Being able to have a governance program that can talk about how you're protecting that data, right? And of course, business continuity. If you don't know what business continuity is, well, that's a way for you to ensure that there are redundant systems and redundant things in place. There are uh, plans to protect against stuff. There's stuff to, pro on, to protect that right side, right? To have that continuity within that business. Backups, disaster recovery, all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, again, being the guy that's going to ask the questions, are these three things that are essentially how we can be more proactive left of boom? Yeah, so this is a good uh, beginning process of getting into left of boom, understanding the why, understanding the what, and looking at the how, right? The why is the compliance, the, the why is protection, 
And the how is developing continuity and business operations. Right on, man. And, and, you know, I think this is just even a nice little education piece because sometimes I don't think we, we some of the products we sell as MSPs or our sales teams, if we're like the technical professionals, right, what they sell, it, it's sometimes hard for us to understand the context on why it's so important this day and age because there's so many things us as MSPs can sell and offer our clients or we can implement for our clients as technical professionals. So I think this is a good education even for, hey, when either my owner or the MSP is out there selling X product, Y product, whatever, here is the the, the reason that they're doing that, right? At the end of the day, it's more of a proactiveness because, and I'm, I'm going to say this all day long, we can tell the client till we're blue in the face, Mr. Client, I think you need to buy a disaster recovery product, right? To have mm -hmm. some business continuity and they don't listen. I'm assuming too as well on the Polygon side, I can give them a policy that says, hey, here's your RPO, right? Your recovery point, your recovery time objectives. And if mm -hmm. you don't like it, here's what you have agreed to. Right, right. So so I, I kind of want to I kind of want to like pinpoint that real and make that really important, right? As an MSP, as a level one, two, twenty owner, doesn't matter anywhere in your MSP that you reside, understanding the why is key. Right. If you know why you're doing something, you have a tool, you have a governance platform. If you understand that why, then you can support it in your MSP with your clients, explaining the why to them and bringing those things to the table. Right. Lots of great books out there about finding your why. And one of the cool things that I you know, recently digested was for everybody in the organization to understand the why. Why do I need Polygon? Because you are going to be regulatory compliance managed and you're going to need to deal with policies and procedures. And if you're not, your clients are. Well, and at the end of the day, right, it's something that we have to do, right? We are services businesses. At the end of the day, our clients are hiring us because they don't want to do it, nor do they have the budget to hire dedicated IT and cybersecurity professionals internally right. to do it, right? So while sometimes, right, we love the idea of putting our head down and knocking out tickets, sometimes we need to pick our heads up and go, hey, we got to meet our client where they're at. But at the same time, if there are potential things in their future, we just got to let them know. And sometimes, and I know this from running my own business, sometimes legally I need it documented that I told them that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and that, you know, that goes back to getting your house in order, covering your risk, right? Yeah, it's sometimes through. risk of the MSP, not of the client. Yes, exactly, exactly. Like we mentioned employee handbook, right? You are going to tell those employees, this is what the vacation policy is. This is what the paternity matern, like this is what we do. And you agreed to adhere to it. And when you're late seven out of seven days a week and you excuses excuse like when you're not living up to your job that you've agreed to now i have a document that says this is what you said you were going to be there's an accountability aspect there right and so Ooh, you said my favorite word tim you know i think mm -hmm. this resonates with some people right the the accountability <laughs> baseball bat sometimes needs to come out Exactly. Right. It doesn't matter if, if, if it's a password policy or an employee handbook. Right. What Polygon brings is that level of accountability across the organization. Right. And an easy to use software application, web based fun stuff. <laughs> well, Tim, you know, I think we're coming close to our time limit and I want to have a chance to say thank you for sponsoring this amazing conference that we are going to have. And honestly, it, as someone that's been in the in the shadows of the last 68 months planning this, it would not have happened without the vendors contributing so that we could have a dedicated place for education. So thank you so much. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, we were very selective on the conferences that we were choosing to go to this year. And MSP Geek was only one of the two that we were choosing for this year at the moment. And so we're very proud to, to be part of this, uh, very proud to be part of the community. And we look forward to seeing you stopping by our booth. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Right on, man. Well, hey, we appreciate it again. And I want to reemphasize it, guys, that, it, that that's literally the response we've been getting as we've been playing this conference is these vendors, our 
our counter, not counterweight, but they're, they're, they help us float, guys. They really are there to raise the tide. And a lot of these vendors out there, they have MSP backgrounds. They were one of us at one point, and they understand those struggles that we have to deal with day after day. And it's so amazing to see the response that they've had. And with that being said, guys, it is a wrap for today's Vendor Spotlight with Tim from Compliance Risk. I hope you all enjoyed learning more about his journey and the amazing solutions his company has to offer. As always, guys, we want to thank the MSP Geek community as well for joining us and being part of this conversation. The input and feedback we've been getting from all of you has been invaluable to the growth and success of our industry and our channel. If you have any additional questions or you want to learn more about Polygon or Compliance Risk, please be sure to check them out their website. Go connect with Tim at the conference. Go message him on MSP Geek. He'll find a way to get a hold with you. And finally, big shout out to MSP Geek for creating this amazing platform and community to share our experiences and knowledge with each other. We can't wait to see what the future holds for our community. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, guys, keep geeking out. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.